The world of Subnautica is an underwater paradise, just ripe with caves ready for exploring, plants to be harvested, organisms to be killed and eaten, and blueprints to scan. Now amongst these, there are some animals that are just a bit less friendly than some of the others. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most aggressive amongst the fauna of our planet in Subnautica, and the one who has been the source of many curses and many player deaths with CMOS being lost along the way with hours of progress. Today we'll be taking a look at the Reaper Leviathons. I will be exploring everything we know about these guys, where to find them, uh, their looks, their behavior, and also, just maybe, I can tell you how to deal with them and how to even possibly kill them. So, let's just jump right on that. Now to start us off, let's talk about their looks and what they actually are. The Reaper Leviathan is a very aggressive species of fauna that inhabits several areas of your game that are accessible to the player. They are so large in fact that they are actually the fifth largest animal in the game with being the third largest that is aggressive towards the player. They are almost as long as the Cyclops, the large submarine, and they will not hesitate to hurt the player the Seamoth, or even the aforementioned Cyclops if you get too close to them. They of course fit into the category of carnivores, and this can also be observed by their behavior, as they can be seen attacking random fish, sand sharks, and bone sharks if they get too close to them. Now, as I already mentioned, these things are aggressive on site, and if the player gets too close to the point where the Leviathan notices them, they will attack you and they will deal massive damage. In fact, they deal 80 damage with a single bite. Now let's talk about their appearance. As already mentioned, they are indeed a giant creature, being almost as long as the Cyclops submarine. They have a very long, slim and muscular body with a large fin in the back which they use to propel themselves in change direction, very similarly to a sea snake. It has two additional fins which run alongside its body and two very small ones on its belly. All of them come in the same color palette which is being predominantly white with large red stripes going along the top of their body and along the bottom. The face is dominated by a rhino-like horn on their forehead with four eyes below that and four large mandibles. If you actually look closer, you can see multiple scars on the body, particularly around the head, which further shows us the aggressive nature of these guys and the fact that they probably get into conflicts and fights even amongst each other quite a lot. An interesting fact is that they are amongst the only three organisms in the entire game which do not have bioluminescent parts anywhere to their body, meaning you will not see these guys coming if you're in pitch darkness until they're right in your face, which adds yet another layer of scariness to them, but also kind of shows us how they've been able to survive and develop as this top tier predator, especially in the lower depths that they inhabit. Now you will probably hear these guys a bit before you see them, as they tend to emit very loud and echoing uh, roaring sounds that you can hear from pretty large distances. In fact, if you read the databank entry, it will actually tell you that these roars serve as a sort of echolocation. If it decides to attack you, there's also a pretty solid chance that it will circle you for a tiny bit before attacking you, often trying to go for jabs from the back where the player is not suspecting it. Now besides just being able to deal massive damage with its bites, it can also uh, grab the Seamoth and smash it along the seabed causing additional damage, and when fighting with the Cyclops, even though it technically cannot grab it, it will repeatedly smash into the submarine causing heavy damage and potentially destroying it over time. Now these large bastards can be found mostly around the Aurora, which is probably where people have had their first encounters with them, then in the crash zone, in the mazes of the crash zone, in the dunes, and in the mountain biome. They are active during both the day and the night, so you're not going to be sneaking alongside of them, and they are absolutely guaranteed to haunt your nightmares ever since you get attacked by one, your submarine gets destroyed, and you lose hours of progress, also your dignity. But that's besides the point. An interesting point pointed out by the wiki is that the Reaper Leviathan somewhat resembles a real-life creature known as the Oarfish, but it is currently unknown whether that was intentional or not. Now, even though these guys might seem like the top of their class, funny enough, they are not actually the top predator in the world of Subnautica. There is another class of Leviathan, which we might talk a bit more about in a future episode, which has the abilities and the want 
to hunt and eat these guys, as is evident by a couple of Reaper Leviathan skeletons which can be found in the inactive lava zone. The place inhabited by the sea dragon leviathan. Apparently, these guys sometimes make long trips to the surface to hunt the leviathans and then drag their bodies down into the lava zone. Now finally, even though many players have probably crapped their pants upon hearing this sound, it doesn't actually have to mean that you are screwed because there are ways to kill these monsters, even if they are pretty dangerous. The main means of defense, if you're not really intent on killing them, but simply surviving, is of course going to be the stasis rifle, as if they are hit by it, it will stun them and they cannot move for, you know, as long as the stun lasts. If you're trying to kill them, this is of course your time to attack, either with a knife, or if you want to use the prawn suit, it has to be equipped with an arm that is capable of dealing damage. Once the leviathan is dead, after repeated shots with the rifle, and damage being inflicted to its body, it will flop onto its stomach, giving you the chance to now scan it and add the entry into your databank. Now it is worth a note that you can scan it even while it's still alive, but it's probably going to be considerably more dangerous. And just to end this video off, a little bit of interesting information. Originally, the Leviathan was actually modeled to be very similar in size to the Bone Sharks or the Sand Sharks, but we all know that didn't come to pass, so it has that afterwards been increased in size significantly. And as another interesting tidbit, some players have been theorizing that initially the, Le the Reaper Leviathans had a much larger biome that they inhabited fully, which was where the current crash landing of the Aurora is. Now because it has crashed and destroyed most of it, they have kind of spread around with some of them breeding around the mushroom forest and some others breeding around the Aurora. But if they ever had a biome, it is probably thought that it would be mountainous, kind of sharp, spiky, and one person actually uh, captures pretty nice when they said that they imagined it as the mountains of Mordor. But anyways, that is everything I could have found or researched about the lore of Reaper Leviathans. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there's anything I missed, or if there's an interesting theory, maybe a fan theory that you have, make sure to leave that down in the comments. If you enjoyed this type of video, maybe consider liking, commenting, or subscribing. It would really mean a lot. I wish you all a bit of rest of today, and I'm gonna see you all in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.